when I'm in my office in the swamp, uh, it's a total escape. It's exciting. I'd like to tell people it's full contact photography. I'm in the scene. Typically my images involve water and I like the perspective of being in the water to make my images. My name is John Brady and I'm a landscape photographer. All right, well these are some of my Florida images. And this one's one of my favorite. This is called the Fish Eating Creek. And Fish Eating Creek has a lot of things that I really like. You know, one, it has water. Two, it has beautiful old cypress trees growing along the edges of the water and in some cases in the water. And then it also has some of these beautiful live oaks. You know, the scale of this picture is so amazing. And also the detail. From where I'm standing right now, I feel like I could be sitting on the other side of the bank of this river here. Yeah. And I, I'm, it's almost I'm, like I'm there. Well, one of the things that I try to do with my images is to help the viewer do just that, to feel like they are there. After being awed by John's images, I was eager to meet him in the field and see what it really takes to capture his pristine landscapes. I had discovered he really does become immersed in the scene. Hey, John, how are you? Good it's morning. Good to see you. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. You picked a really good day. Oh, I man. like what I see. We're going to have a good one. Sun's coming up. Beautiful day. We're out in the Big Cypress Preserve this morning. The Big Cypress is the western part of the Everglades. It encompasses a big chunk of Collier County. We're on the Gator Hook Trail. And how far from Naples is it about? I'd say we're, you know, maybe 30 miles outside of Naples. Pretty close. Why do you come out here? What is it about this place? Well, we only have one Everglades and, you know, we have to preserve it and protect it. And, and I'm hoping that the beauty of these images help inspire people to do just that. What's your game plan out there? We're going to go out and we're going to find a, uh, a cypress dome that's got some ancient cypress in it. One of the few that we have left, actually. Get out there and you start walking around. You find out it's not that scary place that a lot of people think the swamp is going to be. So you're telling me there's nothing to be afraid about there? Uh, you know, we're, we're out in the swamp, so of course there's going to be some alligators. But, uh, you know, again, it's not, it's not as intimidating as that might sound. Good deal. Well, you're the expert. I'm trusting you. All right, let's check it out. Let's do it. Watch your step out here. So what is, what is this down here? So this is the remains of the old tram trail. The loggers built this trail. They used it to haul their logs in. Logging was a big part of the history back here in the big cypress. And unfortunately, we've lost a lot of the old mature cypress trees because the loggers got them. Cypress is a very hard wood, and unfortunately, it was such a great wood, it was desired. I mean, for example, these old tram tracks are underwater most of the time in the summer, and they're solid as a rock still. The cypress tree really withstands rot and decay. So the terrain kind of changes a little bit here. Yeah, right? the terrain's constantly changing. If you look out here in the distance, you can start to see the shape of the cypress dome. Here in the big cypress, one of the unique features is some of the dwarf cypress. There's a dwarf with some character. The main reason why they become dwarf cypress are the growing conditions. If the nutrients aren't available for them to grow into a large, huge cypress, they're going to stay dwarfed and I like to think of them almost like a bonsai tree. It's one of my favorite photographic subjects because they all have so much character. See as we start to approach the dome, the habitat's changed. Now we're into a little bit more of a dense forest area. Trees are still a little bit lower though. We still have some classic dwarf cypress, but up ahead we're going to get into the taller cypress. We're going to leave the poor nutrient area and get into a more rich nutrient area and a wetter area. Each step you take, you'll see changes. You'll see changes in the plants, you'll see changes in the trees, and it's an exciting place. Well, now we're getting into the dome. And you can, you can tell we're in the dome by the water we're standing in. You can see one of the things that we're starting to get into now are all the bromeliads and the trees, the air plants and 
again another change in the environment as we move forward. It's one of the deepest spots in the dome straight out there. I know if I was a big gator that's probably where I'd be right now. But we're not going to walk out there. What is it that you're looking for when you're in here? I look for somewhat open areas, maybe some interesting trees, a place where the light looks like it's just perfect. Um, wait till I'm inspired. This is my 8x10 wooden view camera. The view camera has no electronics. We focus everything with the bellows and all the focusing is done through the back of the camera on the ground glass. Another neat aspect of the view camera is without moving the camera we're able to raise and lower the lens and essentially that's like pointing the camera up and down to take a photograph doesn't change the perspective but it allows us either to get more foreground in or more treetops in depending on what we need to do. All right I'm gonna put my dark cloth on so I can see what's happening with this image. When I go under this dark cloth the rest of the world goes away. It's a nice a nice safe place. You know people ask me why I work with a wooden view camera because it's you know it's old-fashioned it's slower it's an old technology but using a camera like this it forces me to really slow down for me it connects me with the landscape it connects me with the place that I'm at and once I'm set everything's set up I'm ready to take a picture then I wait I wait for the light I wait for the wind I wait for everything to be just perfect and some days it doesn't become perfect but just being out in the field and uh, being out here in the nature and the solitude yeah, it makes it all worthwhile in itself if you get a great picture that's a bonus and my meter is telling me that we're looking for something around four seconds. And I'm probably going to add a couple seconds to that for something called reciprocity loss. With six seconds, I can usually just count it off. And that'll do it. We just made an image. And now we can pull it back out into the light. Today, John and I both enjoyed Florida's serenity. And John got a bonus another stunning landscape. Long live the big cypress.